So in today's video, we're doing a comparison between the N1 Ultra, the N1, both from JM Go, and we're gonna be putting them head to head to find out, is it worth paying more for the N1 Ultra 4K? Let's get started. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. So I have done a full review on both of these machines and I'll leave the link in the description for you. Now the one on the left is the N1 Ultra, that's the 4K version. The one on the right is the N1, which is the 1080p, the little brother, the baby version. But does it perform in such a poor way that you should completely dismiss it? Well, the results of this video may be surprising. First of all, connections on the back, you do get an extra HDMI port on the N1 Ultra and the N1 Ultra is a far more chunky machine. In fact, it weighs a total of 9.9 two pounds or four and a half kilos. Now that's more than double the weight of the N1, which is around two kilos or around 4.4 pounds. A nice feature on the N1 Ultra is the turntable on the bottom. This means it's a lot easier to position because you can just swivel the projector around. Whereas on the N1, you do get a tripod mount, which means that you can attach it to a tripod and really position it anywhere. The N1 Ultra 4K is just a little bit too heavy to go onto a tripod. Now the M1 Ultra 4K is incredibly bright. There is a little bit of a change in its measurement though. When it first came out, it said it was 4,000 ANSI lumens. Now that's since been revised. It's now measured in CVIA lumens, which is the Chinese equivalent, and it's measuring 2,200, whereas the N1 is 800 CVIA lumens. But I'll do a comparison in a second so you can see head to head how they differ. Either way, the N1 Ultra is able to deliver an incredible picture even in full daylight. As you can see, it's the middle of the day, the blind is open, it's very bright outside, and it's delivering an incredible image. So this is definitely a projector that you can use no matter what time of day or night. But obviously with any projector, it's when it's darker that they really come into their own. And as I lower the blind and then swing back round, you'll see the difference, and it really is quite remarkable. This does deliver deliver just some of the best imagery that I've seen on a projector this year. It is really just stunningly good to look at. Both of the projectors have a triple color laser which gives you 30,000 hours worth of use, a great input lag of around 15 milliseconds and a 1600 to 1 contrast ratio. This is the N1 and as you can see again it's in the middle of the day. This was me projecting onto my kitchen units just to give you an example of how good this thing is. And when I pan it around in just a second you can see it moves onto my screen which I've got downstairs and again it does a great job. Both projectors have got automatic keystone and automatic focus but the N1 Ultra also has object avoidance. So the N1 does do a fantastic job in daylight. However, what I would say is that there's definitely a more softness to the picture. It's not quite as crisp. The focus is definitely not as good as the N1 Ultra. And you'll notice that when I do them head to head in just a second. But in dark rooms, it also looks really great. But you are getting better I think contrast ratio on the N1 Ultra because the blacks are better and also the colors are just that little bit more vibrant. But it's the focus which just seems to be far more superior on the N1 Ultra. This is them head to head, N1 Ultra on the left, the N1 on the right, and I'm not sure whether you can see the difference. Don't get me wrong, I'm completely blown away by how good the N1 is. But when you look at it closely and you're in the same room, there is definitely a world of difference. If you look at the blacks, for instance, I've got the camera on exactly the same settings. I didn't even stop recording when I set these both up. And you can see that the blacks on the N1 Ultra is definitely far more superior. And it just gives you a whole better feel of image quality and image sharpness. So you are definitely getting that. However, without that being side by side, you would be very impressed with the N1. The difference in picture quality really comes down to the size of the chip. With the N1 Ultra 4K, it's a 0.47 inch DMD chip by MediaTek, and with the N1, it's a 0.33 inches. So that extra 0.14 of an inch definitely makes a big difference. Another big difference is the sound quality. The sound on the N1 Ultra is really great. It, the bass on it is fantastic. There's two 10 watt speakers, whereas on the N1, there's two 5 watt speakers. Now here I've run the same clip and I've tried to line them up side by side. But I think that what this shows is how good the N1 is. 
So I'm projecting this onto a 100 inch screen and I think that the N1 is doing an incredibly good job. Yes, the N1 is definitely sharper and that focus in the mountains, the rocks, you can see it's a lot softer on the N1. But is it the difference in price? Well, that's really going to be down to you. Now, there are another few differences between the two. I found with the N1 Ultra 4K, the gimbal mechanism is definitely better. Now, this may be down to the weight of the machine, but any position that you put it in, it holds it really well, and that's with or without a connection in the back. One thing to point out on both machines, though, with a connection in the back, it's a lot more difficult to get a vertical image on the ceiling. What you'd probably need to do is use some form of HDMI adapter so that you could get the cable going underneath. On the N1, with an HDMI cable in the back, you do get a little bit of movement. Just the weight of the HDMI cable can move it. Now, don't get me wrong, you can just position it in a slightly different position and wait for it to then adjust. It's absolutely fine with nothing connected in the back, but it's something worth bearing in mind. Both of these have got screen alignment and also auto keystone and auto focus. But the N1 Ultra, as I mentioned earlier, is the only one with obstacle avoidance. So that might be something that you need to bear in mind. On either machine, you can also choose to have the manual keystone correction and also a manual focus as well. So you've got both options there. So both of these machines are incredibly impressive and you get a fantastic image, no matter which one that you're using. However, I would probably say that the N1 Ultra 4K is probably more for a home theater arrangement. Now with the N1 being so small, I even put it in my bathroom. It's that small, you can take it absolutely anywhere. So if it's portability, if it's a bedroom type projector that you're looking for, well then the N1 is gonna be perfectly fine. But if you're looking for that movie experience and you're wanting the big screen and it's more of a permanent setup, then I think I'd probably go for the N1 Ultra. So many of the features for both of these projectors are almost identical. The N1 Ultra 4K obviously is brighter, 2200 CVI lumens against 800 on the N1. And it also has the 4K resolution opposed to the 1080p Full HD on the N1. They've both got incredible color at 110% of the BT2020 color gamut and the display technology are both DLP. They use a DMD chip 0.47 inches on the Ultra 4K compared to 0.33 inches and this is that pixel shifting technology. They both have the same triple laser light source. The speakers on the N1 Ultra are far better, two 10 watt speakers and the bass is definitely a lot better. But both of these projectors are almost silent in their operation. It's quite incredible how quiet they are. There is that extra input, remember, on the N1 Ultra 4K. So which one do you think you would go for? They're both incredible machines. I'll leave links to both of them in the description so you can check out the latest price where you are. Thank you for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next.